Hey guys, Button25 here, watching the launch of TICOM 8. Anya and Pedia. And we have liftoff. Oh, well, that's just. That's early. Missions. Coordinated time on Friday, May 27th, 2016, and you are looking at a live Falcon 9 on the pad in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Good evening, and welcome to the SpaceX launch of TICOM 8 to geostationary transfer orbit. My name is Brian, and I'm excited to be all the way back from the launch sites here at company headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Now, I'm currently just Standing outside of Mission Control Center, where inside the glass, beyond the viewing employees, operators are or about 2.40 p.m. here on the local Pacific coast. Today we will be placing TICOM-8, a communication satellite, into orbit such that it delivers coverage to parts of Thailand, India, and Africa. We'll talk more about the specific mission later, as well as provide some status updates <coughs> on the vehicles and attempt to give you another live viewing of the landing. With an exciting program ahead of us, let's get started. Yes. This is Tom Poderio. I'm a firmware engineer in the avionics department here at SpaceX. Now, it's looking like a beautiful day to launch a rocket at Spa uh, Cape Canaveral Air Force Base on the space coast of Florida. Now, Cape Canaveral Air Force Base actually has many launch pads, some for NASA, some for the Air Force, and some oh, for other private that. launch contractors. But space launch... Com 40, which is what you see right here on your screen, is operated exclusively by SpaceX for the Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, we actually like to launch from Cape Canaveral because it's just about as low latitude as you can get in the contiguous United States, which allows us to utilize the full momentum of the Earth's rotation as we launch east out over the ocean. And also now, means let's get a little familiar with the pattern losses. that you're seeing on your screen. The big structure right in the middle is the Falcon 9 rocket. And we actually assemble the Falcon 9 rocket in a hangar that's just off the screen. Uh, we assemble it horizontally in what's called the transporter erector. That's that support structure that's currently standing right next to the rocket. So we assemble it horizontally on the transporter erector and then roll it out on big rails right to the launch pad and erect it vertically. And then just before liftoff, the transporter erector actually lifts, it leans back just a little bit to allow the, uh, the rocket to clear the tower. Now there are four more towers here, they are these lightning towers on the, around the pad. These are essentially just big lightning rods so that when lightning strikes, and it happens very often in Florida, it doesn't damage the rocket or any other sensitive uh, pad electronics. Uh, now the Falcon 9 is actually just a stack of tanks really, it's made up of three different sections. The first stage takes up the bottom 60% of the rocket, then on top of that is the second stage, and then finally the payload fairing right at the very top. Inside those tanks are super cold liquid oxygen and ca compressed kerosene, or RP-1 fuel. These RP really, really cold, cold fluids uh, are separated from the hot, humid Florida air by only a small, thin aluminum skin, uh, which is why you can see some of that condensation smoke boiling off. That's totally normal, just locks boil off and condensation. It'll continue to happen right to the end of the launch. So just as soon as, uh, so we'll be launching in just a few minutes here. 18 minutes. Hi, I'm Lauren Lyons, and I'm a mission integration engineer here at SpaceX. Today we're launching TICOM-8, which is a 3,000 kilogram Thai communication satellite, and we're taking it to geostationary transfer orbit. Once the satellite reaches its final orbit, geostationary orbit, it will provide Southeast Asia, South Asia, and East Africa with broadcast and data services. This is actually SpaceX's second time launching a TICOM satellite. The first was TICOM-6 back in 2015. Today we're going to be continuing our experimental efforts to land the first stage of the Falcon 9 on our autonomous spaceport drone ship, in this case, of course, I still love you, off the coast of Florida. Like our last flight, which was JCSAT-14 just a few weeks ago, this is also a geostationary transfer orbit mission, where the first stage is expected to see extreme velocities and re-entry heating on its way back to Earth, making this another challenging landing. But while sticking this landing is not entirely likely, as you saw with that last flight, it's also not impossible. That marked our third successful landing and our first landing of a rocket that delivered a payload to geostationary transfer orbit, which means the stage is traveling much faster and it had far fewer remaining propellant in the tanks than the previous two low Earth orbit landings before it. After hitting the atmosphere, atmosphere at 6,300 kilometers per hour and experiencing five times the aerodynamic heating of the CRS-8 landing before it, the Merlin engines relit at only 850 meters above the Earth, 
touching down at four kilometers per hour at a mere two meters from the bull's eye at the center of the drone ship. Yep. And all that with only three seconds of propellant remaining in the tank. While today's landing is expected to be similarly challenging, there's no guarantee that we're going to get the same result as last time. But we're still going to try our best to bring Falcon 9 home. If it doesn't work, we get some webcast, We'll talk about what our plans are for that JCSAT booster from the last one. The future of the oh, other two Falcon 9 first stages of 39A. Well, we'll also tell you about this TICOM satellite, its purpose, the trajectory is on. And follow that up with a little rocket science 101. So we've got a ton of really cool stuff planned today. Before we jump in, let's get an update on the status of the Falcon 9 right now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm John Federspiel, a lead mechanical design engineer here at SpaceX. And as you know, we are launching the TICOM 8 satellite to a geostationary transfer orbit. Now, I've been following along with today's countdown, and the good news at this moment is all stations are go, and we are lurking no issues at the moment. And as you know, yesterday we postponed our launch attempt out of an yes, abundance of caution. Now, for every launch, we carry out extensive checks, and as part of these checks, we found that the motion of an actuator on our second stage engine, which is basically what we use to help steer the vehicle, was slightly off. Uh, this actuator is responsible for directly gimbling the engine in flight, which allows us to adjust the vehicle's pitch and yaw uh, through ascent. Now, while the behavior we saw yesterday was likely not a risk to a successful flight, it's always better to be safe than sorry, so our team took the extra time to address this issue. And since then, we have performed continuous checks across the Falcon vehicle, and we are currently working no issues at the moment, looking full on our uh, refined kerosene RP1 full, uh, and we're tracking nominal fill rates for our liquid oxygen right now, nearly full on stage one and uh, continuing to fill up our stage two tanks at the moment. We're gonna keep filling up that stage two tank right up until about the two minute mark, trying to make sure that the liquid oxygen is as cold as possible. Meanwhile, the TICOM 8 satellite transitioned to internal power at the T minus 40 minute mark. Uh, they're tracking no constraints at the moment for today's launch and are also uh, good and ready to go. And the range has also been checking out their radar and tracking systems. They are also standing by and ready to support, tracking no issues at the moment. Uh, speaking of the weather, though, that's kind of the last thing of the four main checks we look at. Uh, we are tracking a 20% chance of violating. Uh, the only thing that would potentially set back today's launch would be a cumulus cloud rule. Oh. Uh, right now, everything continues to be go, though, uh, for today's on-time launch at 2.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so to recap, both Falcon 9, TICOM 8, the range and weather are go for today's launch. As the audience starts to trickle in behind me, let's take a moment to discuss both the customer and the specific mission for today. So the customer is TICOM, and the mission is TICOM 8. These guys have been launching satellites all the way back since 1993 with TICOM 1. Of the seven that they've previously launched, four are still in active service out in space. The others have been decommissioned. So today we'll mark the fifth satellite that will be up there providing coverage to specific surface regions of the Earth. Now, TICOM-8 was built by Orbital ATK out in Virginia, and it follows the Geostar bus. This is a bus with a lot of history, and TICOM-8, for today's mission, will actually be flying the next generation of that, the Geostar 2 bus. So where will TICOM-8 be going? SpaceX's second stage will take it all the way up to what we call Geostationary Transfer Orbit, or GTO. The spacecraft itself with onboard propellant will then send itself all the way back up to geostationary orbit or geo. Now, why are those both called geostationary? It's because the angular velocity of the satellite in its orbit is the same as the rotation rate of the Earth. So the, although both bodies are in motion, they're in motion together. And so you stay above the same continents on Earth. This is really important for communication satellites that want to focus their radios on a specific region. Now, in terms of technical specifications of today's TICOM-8 satellite, size-wise, it's about 3,000 kilograms. For a mass reference on the ground, that's the size of a rhinoceros. So it's a pretty big satellite. The satellite is going to be up there for 15 years in a nominal mission duration. That's quite a long time. So in order to stay up there, it has two solar wings that it extends out with four panels on each side so they can remain power positive in the course of years and years and years. It also has reaction wheels to stabilize itself around three separate axes. So it is a tried and true satellite design, and it will be going up to geostationary transfer orbits after a quick stint on the Falcon 9. 
Now, the TICOM 8 satellite is currently on top of the Falcon 9. You just can't see it because it's encapsulated by the fairing. Now, the fairing is this nose cone shaped structure on top of the rocket. If we use the fairing to protect the payload or anything else we're launching into space from the intense aerodynamic forces of a launch. Now, uh, when we, unlike the Dragon capsule, which is designed to re enter uh, through the intense uh, heating of the Earth's atmosphere when it comes back from orbit, uh, most satellites going to low Earth orbit or geostationary orbit are a little light. They're, they're kind of uh, not built to withstand those really high, uh, intense air forces. So, what we do is we encapsulate inside the fairing. Uh, you've actually felt these air forces if you've ever held your hand outside of a car window at highway speed. You can kind of feel your, the wind pushing your hand around. Well, that's just at highway speeds. You can imagine that the forces would be a whole other order of magnitude once you got up to twice the speed of a bullet, which is exactly the speed that the Falcon 9 uh, attains on ascent. Uh, so the fairing itself is huge. It looks kind of tiny on the screen right here, but it's pretty big. It's about uh, 40 feet high and up to 17 feet in diameter. That's pretty much the size of a city bus we could launch if we wanted to inside this thing. Uh, it's made of two halves that clamp together with pneumatic pushers, and it's made of a blend of, of honeycombed aluminum and, and carbon fiber. Uh, so it's actually as low, low weight as possible, but as high strength as we can get it, which is super important when you're launching stuff to space. So once the first and second stage do their job and bring the payload out of the atmosphere where those intense aerodynamic forces uh, matter, we pop the fairing off using those pneumatic pushers. You can actually see that this is a video from one of our previous launches. You can see those two objects falling away from the second stage. Those are the two halves of the fairing that we're deploying once we're done using them. And you'll actually be able to see this later on when, when we launch the TICOM-8 satellite once we get up the top of the atmosphere. So now, once uh, we've, we've well, and pumped them up, they re-entered the atmosphere, but wouldn't it be really cool if we could reuse them? We're already reusing the first stage, so currently SpaceX engineers are looking into ways to recover the fairing once it pops off. You can actually see some live shot from a previous launch of what it looks like when the fairing pops off. That's the inside of the fairing right there. So uh, just another step towards rapid and reusable launch technologies here at SpaceX is what we're all about. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to see a fairing recovery and a launch coming up pretty soon. We are just 10 minutes inside the 10 minute mark on the vehicle right now, which means we've begun starting the engine chill of our Falcon 9 rockets. That's the process where we start flowing the cold liquid oxygen into the Merlin engines at the base of the rocket. It's also the point where if you look at the rocket on the screen, you'll start to see that white cloud that Tom mentioned earlier starting to flow and intensify at the base of the rocket. Now the good news at this moment in time is that we are still proceeding with a nominal LOX and helium load uh, on the vehicles. We're going to continue to load those liquid oxygen tanks, as I mentioned earlier, up until the very final moments. We're also tracking the liquid oxygen temperatures within our second stage and first stage. Uh, we have enough margin as well on the temperatures for our liquid oxygen to make sure we have substantial margin for today's flight. Uh, now the team did begin propellant loading at the T-minus 35 minute mark, which which was kicked off with a pull by the launch conductor about three minutes prior to that. Uh, everyone gave the go during that launch conductor pull, and we had no issues to report. And we are continuing to proceed into the LOX loading phase uh, at this moment. And nothing is to be, uh, and nothing should be delaying our liftoff point uh, in eight minutes from now. Uh, TICOM 8 continues to also be green for today's mission. No issues there to report as well. Meanwhile, the range and weather are going to hold out. Uh, we don't need to worry about anything and any constraints to hold us off as well. We are standing, uh, our, we are positioning our recovery drone ship about 680 kilometers off the coast of, of Florida. Um, that drone ship is in a good state as well. Uh, we have enough margins for our tent uh, landing uh, back on. Of course, I still love you. So coming up. We have at the T minus one minute mark, our flight computers are entering into startup mode. That's where we begin a final series of autonomous checks leading into the T minus three second mark where you're gonna see a bright green flash from the base of the rocket where our T-TEB is going to start as the igniter for our Merlin engines. We'll reach full thrust the T minus one second mark and then lift off shortly thereafter. So hopefully all these things and events pan out and we are, because we are go right now from Hawthorne and Cape Canaveral, Florida. My name is Lauren Lyons. I I'm mission integration engineer here at SpaceX, and I'm standing here in Tankland in our factory in Hawthorne, California. Now, it's pretty loud in here, and that's because we're making rockets. If you've been following us on social media, you've probably seen that image of the three first stages lined yes, up in our hangar at 39A Cape Canaveral, Florida. The first was flown back to land back in December for our Orbcom mission, the first time we've ever stuck the landing of a first stage. The second was from our CRS-8 mission, where we landed the stage on our autonomous spaceport drone ship, of course, ASTS. I still love you, 
off the coast of Florida. First sea landing. Okay, we're going to bump this down. We're referring to that as our life leader, which is because it underwent the hottest and fastest reissue profile yet. That's because it was a GTO mission, and in order to get the satellite up to that super high orbit, you have to go really, really fast. Also, and goes that on fast the speed power. leads to increased heating as it's coming down through the atmosphere and coming back to Earth. In fact, that heating is up to five times hotter than what was experienced on previous missions. So what are we going to do at rocket number three from the CRS mission, our first drone ship landed? We plan to refly it later this year. It turns out many of the parts of the Falcon 9 are actually already qualified for reflight as they were designed with reusability in mind. As we continue to bring home boosters, we will ramp up our flight proven vehicle program. Think about it like airplanes. Imagine we threw away the airplane after every single flight. Air travel would be so expensive that no one would really be able to fly. Instead, when an airplane completes a flight and sent back into commission and, and it's reflown, at SpaceX, we plan to apply that same technique to rockets, hopefully lowering the cost of launch by up to 30%. As you just saw, we now have three landed stages in our hangar at 39A. Will today be our fourth? Today's mission has a similar reentry profile as for the JC-14 mission, and that will be coming in fast and hot, which makes this landing really challenging. The launch speeds that the Falcon 9 needs to reach GTO, which is where we're taking TICOM 8 today, are upwards of 8,000 kilometers per hour, which means that the resistance that the rocket will encounter when coming back into the atmosphere will heat it up pretty good. But that resistance isn't enough to stop the vehicle's descent, so we'll have to use that tiny amount of propeller we have left in the tank to relight the Merlin engines and to slow us down from 5,800 kilometers per hour down to zero as we gently place the Falcon 9 upright on the deck of the drone ship. But again, while we did not stick that last, while we did stick that last GTO landing, of course, there is no guarantee that we'll have a repeat performance today. But we're still going to try. So the drone ship, of course, I still love you, is positioned 400 miles off the coast of Florida, ready and waiting to bring Falcon 9 home today. So enough about the rocket's return journey for now. We still got to launch it, right? So let's pause here and listen on to terminal count. You can see the lock. Yeah. First off. There's the VAB! I think it's the VAB. No, wait, is it VAB? No, that's not the VAB. The VAB looks different. That's not the VAB, I lied. It turns out it is. No, that's the VAB. I think that bodyguard building, there's the VAB. Yeah, you can see the two doors. But yeah, you can see the locks, clouds at the bottom of the strong vehicle. Strong back motion. Oh, strong back starting to attract there. There was a bird or something. A bug of some kind in the camera. Yeah, this is like when I'm just thinking, ooh, fish. <laughs> yeah, I said, well, you could call that music. FTS ooh! Is on power. New camera view. I am, I am excited. <laughs> That's liquid oxygen there. That is liquid oxygen floating out there. T minus three minutes. Ooh. I am excited. FTC. Stage two TVC motion nominal. Stage two TVC motion is nominal. Good. That, I think that's what screwed, screwed the launch last time. Stage one locks secured for flight. Everything's strong back. Motion is stuff strong back fully retracted. Uh, excitement is building. <laughs> I think many people, even if the. Okay, I think. Something like. Oh, yeah, there's actually the hangar where they assembled the vehicle. Um, I think strong we would. Back, strong back retracted and locked out. I remember last. Well, actually, almost a year this ago. These two locks, care for flight. Almost a year ago when the rocket. Minutes, two minutes. What is that aircraft doing there? Range, you better not call a safety issue. I want to be, I really would want to be in that aircraft. Just all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. I think, even if that, I don't know how far that thing's gonna go in that two minutes until the vehicle lifts up. There's a freaking mosquito on the thing. Right? I'm not gonna risk it. Not 
going to risk it. One minute and 18 seconds. We're seeing with a slightly lower resolution. Oh, yeah, never mind. I like verify Falcon 9 is in startup. Vehicle startup. startup. That means, as you can tell, there is the flight computers taking control of the countdown. That means Falcon 9. Stage 2. First off, flight. Everything is completely controlled by the vehicle, or the computers in the vehicle. Oh, 40 seconds. <laughs> Butterflies in the stomach. Hopefully not literally, I don't really wish to have bugs of any kind flapping around in there. T minus 30. I'm genuinely getting that pain in the stomach you get when you're nervous. T minus 20. Seconds. Falcon 9, secured flight pressures. 15. Ah! I haven't even landed yet, and I'm excited. Uh, I'm trying to be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, two. 1. There you go. Zero. Ignition. Lift Falcon off! We have a lift off of the Falcon 9 carrying Tycon 8. And it has cleared the tower. Falcon 9 has cleared the towers. You see, move to section 10.59 to secure the pad. Oh, yes. Oh, you can see the, the Atlas V pad uh, there. Stage 1 propulsion is nominal. Oh, you just gotta love the, uh, those Merlins. Yeah, it's really weird seeing kind of this. See this view of the vehicle. Okay, this house all basically all white. And then you see the landing. Like ash it's on all the paint's blown off basically. Now, SpaceX plans to clean them up, but they don't plan to repaint them, as far as I can from what I've heard. And Falcon 9 is on its way to delivering the Tycom 8 satellite to a geostationary transfer orbit. You see the plane is starting to Coming up in here. about 15 seconds here, we're gonna be entering through Max Q. You can, see the grid fin, you can see the grid fins here, which will guide the vehicle back. No, I know YouTube is full screen now, don't I'm going to see the halo. The vehicle is over 200 feet tall. Max Q. We just passed through Max Q. I'm still keeping an eye out for the halo. The entire rocket plus countries. satellite is over 1.2 million pounds. Falcon All nine of those engines capable of putting out 1.71 million pounds of thrust. Put on the in a 26-story building weighs over 300 cars. Now coming up in about 30 seconds, we're going to have main engine recovery ground. vessel has AOS. Okay, so press the still view acquired signal from the vehicle. AOS being here. acquisition of signal, that means that the recovery uh, rovers have reached yeah, communication contact addition. with our rocket. In 20 seconds, we're going to have main engine cutoff or MECO. And stage set. Followed three seconds after that by stage separation, which is done by four pneumatic actuators, three on the perimeter of the inner stage and one in the center. And then after that, we're going to have second stage engine start. You just heard about the second stage engine itself is chilling down. Oh, yeah, look, you can see the, get ready the grid fins. Miko. And we have main engine cut off. Not yet. Yep, there we go. Video. Stage separation. Stage set. Stage separation looks good. Ignition. And it looks like we have a good ignition of a second stage engine. Good. Good and back ignition. Look, you can see the first stage there. Fingers crossed, flipping around. Getting ready to return. Yes, this is this is good. This stage getting one is ready to flip. Okay, stage one has to get ready to flip. Okay, when's fairing going to deploy? Oh yeah, okay, it's probably going to be a few more seconds. We'll pass it. Yep, just pass the Carmen line there. Now you 
just saw a few events in rapid succession. We had main engine cutoff for Miko, stage separation, and then second stage engine two. start. These exciting homeworks transition the responsibility from the first stage to the second stage of Falcon 9. And very sad. That's it. Just oh, that's great. Now, the thing about fairy separation I should work is, here. You know, I haven't got... You need to protect the spacecraft from aerodynamic heating and from dynamic pressures. But once you're up in the vacuum of space, you actually don't need it anymore. And it's also extra mass. So we deploy the fairing and, get, and dump it, essentially. <laughs> exactly. And once we get rid of the fairing, then again, the second stage is the one in charge. First stage got us up outside of the atmosphere and a little bit sideways. Second stage is going to burn much longer for about six minutes or so now to give us that massive sideways speed boost. And remember, going to orbit is really not so much about going straight up. It's about going sideways as fast as possible. We need to get that payload to as much delta V as possible, as much speed in this horizontal direction so it can get into orbit around the Earth. That's what orbit's all about. And as, as Brian said earlier today, at geostationary orbit, the speed of the satellite is actually, or the angular velocity of the satellite is actually the same as the rotation of the Earth, so that the satellite is always positioned at the same point in the sky as it orbits the planet. Yeah, and that's fantastic for communication satellites. You want to be over the same regions that you'll be covering, and so a geostationary orbit and a geostationary transfer orbit that we're going to use to get there is perfect for a communication satellite. And so we're, the, we're not out of the woods yet. There's still a few more stages that we need to go through. Uh, the second stage is going to burn for about six minutes, uh, which we're currently doing right now. Then there's going to be a coast period and then a second relight uh, after we come back. So that's we're a lot, a lot of uh, great stuff coming up for you. So why don't we just take it back up and get another status update? So as you can see right now, so far the mission is proceeding nominally, as we like to say around here at SpaceX. That second well, stage is company. looking stage good. We have uh, good propulsion. Engine temperatures are looking good over here. Uh, TVC motion as well is as predicted, and power numbers are also looking as we'd expect on the second stage, as it's trying to achieve a parking orbit of about 160 kilometers by 485 also, kilometers. Also, entry burn is about to take here. place for that the first stage. stage. will then coast for about 20 minutes before we're going to do a second ignition to put it into its final geostationary transfer orbit before we deploy the TICOM-8 satellite. Now coming up, the first stage itself in about 20 seconds here is going to be uh, igniting for its entry burn. That's going to start to slow I'm the vehicle Cross out everything the if you were watching. Uh, it reached its oh! Energy, oh, we got uh, live views from the booster! Two minutes ago, oh, this is, oh, this is amazing! Seeing there that view of the second stage falling back to the Earth. First stage. Those white puffs our, our attitude control system. Oh my god, this is engine. amazing! Uh, gas, the grid fins are already uh, deployed. Well okay. Grid fins are, uh, Stage one, entry burn, burn has begun. Entry burn has begun. This entry burn will last for about 20 seconds. We're going to be guiding it through the entire way back to, of course, I still love you, the drone ship. Uh, it should shut off in about 10 seconds or so. Everything here is looking good. Nominal temperatures. Can you actually see the grid well. for Oh, cut off. Stage one, energy burn shut down. And now we will be keeping that vehicle aligned as we head ourselves back to the drone ship, leading up to a landing burn uh, in about. Oh, you can a see the shock heating. With the goal of touching down at 834. Now, this is normal to see the, uh, the cloudiness in the lens. We're going back to the atmosphere. Uh, those cameras themselves will be uh, obfuscated and then cleared. Okay as we come through the atmosphere so we'll be showing you as many views as we can but the good news we're dropping quality on track so let's check back in with the trio while i keep my eye on the data up here here so as you just heard from jfed the yep. re-entry yep. burn of the first stage is complete that's when the first stage slows itself down just as it hits the top of the atmosphere so it doesn't damage its engines with the intense heat of re-entry Destination of the drone ship. And as we begin to descend the surface of the drone ship, what will happen is those landing legs that are folded up onto the side. They will deploy, extend, or whatever you want to say. 
the nine Merlin engines that are on the bottom of the, of the Falcon 9 as the Falcon 9 lands onto the drone ship. Now we drone ship in US. On the drone ship, you can see it on your screen right there. Uh, it is possible we might cut out for a second. Uh, the vibration of the engines can sometimes uh, shake the satellite link a little bit, uh, but we hope to give you full video through. You'll be able to see the landing burn of the first stage just nope. on the top of your well, stage. First one. Exactly. Landing burn has started. Oh, you can see it shaking. Vehicle incoming. There! Oh! 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 They did it! They did it again! Okay. Just a little more. And it actually looks a lot less burned and bruised than the than JC set. Also, we have second stage engine cutoff. Okay, I'm going to cut back with the video quality again. Cut out for about two seconds and then suddenly the, the first stage was standing right there. Uh, that's incredible. Everyone here is obviously very excited. Uh, so we have, uh, the primary mission is going very well. We have a good orbit, like you were saying. Uh, there's a few more steps coming up here. We're about to go to our coast phase and then we'll come back for a final burn. Exactly. So we're going to leave with an animation here for the next 18 minutes. That animation will show you the position of second stage. What? What are they excited about now? I mean, they've already realized it. Oh no, I'll see you guys. I'm not there. They did it again. They did it again. Okay, guys, I think SpaceX is back. Thanks for sticking with us. We are just over 25 minutes into this uh, count, actually just about 26 minutes right now for today's mission. Uh, second stage ignition will restart in about a minute from now. Uh, if you are just joining us, we are in a good orbit, a good parking orbit. Yeah, have a landing. That orbit is about 160 kilometers by 485 kilometers. Second stage did its job splendidly of trying to target that orbit. Um, and as of this moment, we are just standing by second stage ignition as of right now the second stage has uh, begun chilling in about a minute ago uh, that chill has proceeded nominally uh, and propellants and liquid oxygen in the second stage are uh, at a nominal fill rate for what we'd expect for the second burn um, this second burn will last for a just under a minute and a half uh, and at that point in time we will be deploying the TICOM-8 satellite about four minutes after that. We're going to continue to show you this animation. Uh, oh, here we go. Proceed. That's actually a view from the aft end of our of the second stage right there. You're looking at the engine nozzle. Um, and the vehicle has entered into its startup mode, uh, getting ready for ignition in about three seconds from now. And we are up on power ignition. On the ignition. Uh, everything is looking good at this moment. Our pressures are looking good. Uh, this burn will last for a minute, as I said, and we are now throttling the engine. Uh, the second stage engine is capable of throttling from about 80,000 pound force to 210,000 10, pound force. Uh, we do control that second stage trajectory, as I mentioned earlier, by gimbling the engine. Um, we are continuing to throttle. I'm listening to the, uh, the various nets as they're trying to target uh, the final geostationary orbit for the TICOM-8 satellite. Uh, we will be deploying the TICOM-8 satellite at T plus 32 minutes. Um, so this burn will shut off in about 20 seconds from now. And after that engine has shut off, we will... Um, after that burn has shut off, we will allow the spacecraft to stabilize for a second, and then we will deploy the TICOM-8 satellite 
That TICOM 8 satellite will perform its final maneuvering to get itself into the geostationary orbit. Um, everything still continues to look good, and we have shutdown of the second stage engine. Yep. Video confirms shutdown. And it looks like we are in a good orbit as we planned to, to target for today's TICOM satellite. Launch. So now that we just confirmed successful shutdown of the second stage engine, we are now transitioning from the launch phase to the mission phase. And we actually have a little bit, a uh, few more steps to go here. The TICOM 8 satellite is still attached to the top of the second stage. I mean, I was set to the lower quality. I'm not dropping any lower. TICOM 8 satellite away from the second stage. Yeah. So rays get healthy and everything. Exactly. And we wait a few seconds before we perform that health. Oh, what's. What? Orbit still. But uh, we wait about 15 minutes between Stage 2 and TICOM 8 itself. Once that distance has been established, TICOM moves, fires up, and we do a ground attack from the ground. Just got confirmation that we are in nominal orbit still. But uh, we wait about 15 minutes to give a certain proximity distance between Stage 2 and TICOM 8 itself. Once that distance has been established, TICOM moves, fires itself up to its final orbit, which will be at about 35,000 kilometers above the Earth. Now, satellites that are going to geostationary orbit like TICOM-8 have to stay up there for as long as 15 minutes. Long time without any maintenance from the ground. These include suites of sensors like star trackers, sun sensors, Earth horizon sensors that allow them to position themselves in precisely the right direction so they can serve the intended markets on the ground with their antennas. Exactly, and those fantastic sensor suites consume a bit of power. Well, how does it stay alive for the 15-year-long mission that it intends to? That's with the solar array. So as I mentioned earlier, there are one wing, there's one wing on each side, and each of those has four panels. That allows us to effectively plug a wireless charger into the sun, harvest that energy, and stay power positive throughout the 15 years it's supposed to. And on this 15 years, it turns out we actually can't service these satellites. They're really, really high up, but we don't have any programs right now to be able to get up there and fix them should something go down. So it's critical that the satellite be able to power itself and that it does these health checks and that it can actually survive the 15 years of its planned life. And it is really high up there. 35,000 kilometers, like we were saying earlier, is so high up that the orbital rotation matches the Earth's rotation. So from the perspective of someone on the ground, it looks like a star in the sky. That means you can point your dishes at it. There's actually a, uh, an animation right here that shows exactly where it's going. That was our first second stage burn. You can see the first stage landing, uh, fairing deploy, and then what just happened a few seconds ago was the second stage second burn. That just happens right there. And then uh, the final payload deploy, uh, the TICOM-8 satellite, is coming up in just a few minutes here so it can achieve its final 35,000 kilometer geostationary orbit. Yeah, and 35,000 is worth reiterating. For reference frame, the International Space Station, where our Dragon capsule goes to resupply the astronauts, that sits in low Earth orbit, or LEO, this is about 350 kilometers. This is going to nearly 36,000 kilometers. It's pretty high up. And so to recap how we got to this point, we had a great launch of the Falcon 9 rocket. We landed the first stage. The second stage then continued on its journey. We're now in a really good orbit, and we're just counting down until we deploy the spacecraft. So what you're about to see is a forward-facing camera view from the top of the second stage. You'll be able to see the TICOM-8 satellite, and hopefully if everything goes well, we'll see that satellite gently push away, uh, floating off in the zero gravity of orbit so that it can do its own health checks and deploy its own solar panels. That should be coming up in just a few seconds here. Okay, that was... It sounds like... It sounds like we've got lag. Come on, come on. Separated from SpaceX and second stage. Jump we'll see that satellite gently push away, uh, floating off in the zero gravity of orbit, so that it can do its own health checks and deploys on solar panels. It should be coming up in just a few seconds. It sounds like. Yep. Oh, there it is. You can Play see the satellite gliding away. So Success. Separated from SpaceX and second stage. To do a mission to okay, guys. I'm going to take a look at the technical webcast, just see what they have for landing. So, see you guys over there. Burn has started. Okay, guys, we're watching from the start of the stage one landing burn. Just to see if they have landing legs have deployed. Landing legs have deployed. Of course, we know this landing is a success. There you go. You can see a Yep. Falcon 9 has landed. Landing operators moving to procedure 11.100 on recovery net. 
Okay, guys. Successful landing. I'm about 25. Uh, successful landing and launch. I'm about 25. See you guys. Tomorrow. Or today. I have no clue. <laughs>